It's the first, possibly second century uh, statue of uh, Heracles. Or, you know, the scale of it is, is over life size. You know, its, it's enormity is, is, really, uh, is really fantastic. We can see where, where quite naturally there's, uh, there's pieces missing here. But the hair around here has really uh, survived very well. All of the abdominal muscles here, the muscles around the side, the, the imposing chest, the fact that it's kind of lunging forward. Wow, you know, where the head of the statue originally would have been up here, and the arms out here, and this leg down here. This would have been a statue of absolutely incredible proportions. To me, I just thought that it was, uh, that it was absolutely fantastic, and uh, um, just had to have it, really. <laughs> Well, I think my addiction to collecting just went absolutely ballistic with, uh, with antiquities. And I was mounting them up in storage, you know, I was sort of buying them and just kept going and going and going. And then after, you know, uh, several years, I ended up with literally hundreds and hundreds of items in storage. So I had a chat to um, a friend of mine, Mark Moroni, who is, uh, still is actually chief editor of Minerva magazine. Um, and uh, I said, look, I've, I've, I've got this massive collection of items here, you know, that I'm thinking of just putting in a room and putting on display. You know, do you think people will be interested in seeing them? And uh, he took a look at the inventory and, uh, and he, you know, just couldn't believe it. And he said, you know, this is sort of a world-class collection you've built here. You know, you, I mean, you could have a museum. Like, people wouldn't just walk past this stuff. They'd pay to see it. We then asked a variety of other people in the industry and uh, they looked at, at the collection as well and they said absolutely you know you, you could make some really interesting displays with these things and I've been collecting various artworks with classical themes as well and then at having a museum where you could see how classical antiquities had affected artists all the way from the, the from the renaissance all the way through to actually contemporary artists to, to today the museum has gained notoriety because um, because we have um, made these you know extremely in interesting connections between uh, the ancient antiquities and ancient art and uh, and modern art and uh, and the way that we've done the design of the museum uh, really lends itself to teaching people that connection. Um, because there's actually very few artists in the last three or four hundred years that have not been influenced by the classics, either very directly, obviously, uh, in the Renaissance uh, Baroque period, to much less directly when we talk about artists like, like Damien Hirst, you know, Mark Quinn, for example, uh, and um, uh, or when you get back into the mid 20th century and we start talking about Eve Klein, Warhol. Uh, Dali, etc., um, all had classical periods. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, the British Museum, about f must be about three or four years ago now, um, had a display of, uh, of contemporary artists' works uh, there. And they had a large group of these spin painted plastic skulls by Damien Hirst. Um, of which this is a perfect example by Damien Hirst of one of his spin-painted plastic skulls. So it was skulls almost exactly like this, um, and certainly this form uh, by Damien Hirst that were in the British Museum during that exhibit. So that's really the, uh, the connection there. Um, now, so it's not classic in itself, but there's the connection with the, the British Museum and we have it in a display cabinet where we have uh, a Roman bronze head of Apollo and uh, a Roman bronze head uh, of Augustus. So to have this in the same cabinet uh, where you see sort of the three heads together um, is, um, we thought, made a good juxtaposition. <laughs> But no, you know, trading the markets is something that I think if you're going to do it successfully over the years um, is something where you really actually have to take the emotion out of trading. You know, when things are going well, um, you have to keep your emotions 
very low and under control because you never know whether the next day things are going to go badly. And when things are going badly, uh, you know, you'll be miserable, but you have to not get too miserable and continue doing your analysis and, uh, and researching trades and researching markets and trying to find good opportunities. And uh, um, so even though the markets go like this, you know, you have to keep your emotions just doing that. I mean, otherwise you're, you'll never be successful in the markets and you'll just drive yourself crazy, basically. <laughs> well, collecting, collecting art and things is generally only a positive emotion because you get really excited when you find something that you really want to buy and that, that you know, you, th you think is fantastic. And, uh, and uh, so it's constantly like trying to you know, be on a sort of treasure hunt that never really ends. And every, every now and again, you keep finding a new pot of treasure. And that's the extremely exciting, you know, thing about it. And, you, you know, you find something, you think, wow, that's amazing. Let's take a closer look at that. And, uh, and if it's something that's really important, you know, we need to do some research on that and get some advice from some experts. And then, you know, all that part, uh, part of collecting can be can be fascinating as well. And of course, you're adding to your own general knowledge. I mean, every time you buy a new item or every time you see something in a catalogue, you know, and you read the description, you, you know, you learn something new. And um, so it's a constant process of sort of educating yourself, collecting as well, which, which is also, uh, also quite exciting. You know, actually, I think collecting is an escape from the markets. You know, it's something pleasant to do and um, it's a hobby. And, um, and of course, it's quite expensive, so, so to say the least, uh, at certain levels, although actually collecting doesn't have to be expensive, it depends what you collect and what level in the market, of course. Is. You know, ancient battles were so um, violent and vicious, and, uh, you know, it's, it's just impossible, I think, in this day and age to put yourself you know, in the position of, of, of the people on the battlefield in the, you know, back then and just how extraordinary ancient battles were all the way from, you know, pre-Christ all the way up to sort of, you know, medieval Europe. I don't know, there's just something uh, that's very uh, haunting and uh, emotional about ancient weaponry, actually, and blood curdling. And uh, I think that appeals to a lot of men and boys actually, and uh, it certainly appeals to me. <laughs> My parents were never really interested in art. We never visited art museums, ever. Um, but we used to visit museums of sort of antiques, antiquities, and we visited a lot of churches and a lot of castles. That was really their, their thing. I don't know, I only went to a very ordinary school, <laughs> and I left school when I was 18. I didn't go to university. So, uh, yeah, I became more captivated, I think, on the art side. You know, I was really interested in look at the, looking at the antiquities, of course, in the Louvre, and I've been fascinated with the British Museum as a child. Um, but I hadn't really spent any time wandering around galleries of Dutch or Flemish old masters, for example. And uh, so the more time that I spent in the Louvre, the more I began to sort of understand uh, art, art and art and the history of, of, you know, kind of medieval Europe. I mean, in it's school in England, you learn so much about, about medieval England, but you don't really learn much about medieval Europe, what was going on in Italy in the 16th century, etc. You know, and uh, you can discover a lot by looking at, uh, at artworks in museums like the Louvre and spending a lot of time in each gallery and then doing a, you know, a bit of reading on those artists. and. Uh, and that I started to find, you know, really fascinating.